Hello, welcome to another episode of Miller's Musings. We do it every Monday, and now we've got some crazy vlogs. I'm going to pull this closer. We've got some crazy vlogs that are going in throughout the week as well. Last week, had a great response to me telling people I'm not Johnny Sins. Little card's going to pop up there. You can click and go and watch it. No, I'm not Johnny Sins. And kind of by accident, I trolled everyone because if you click that video, all of a sudden you're suggested was all Johnny Sins. So really, this was like my, my comeback, my awakening when it comes to Johnny Sins. People said, oh, Miller, maybe one day you can do a collab video with Johnny Sins. I don't think I am. I'm too much of a prude. I don't think I could do it, but who knows? Um, so when I was asking for ideas, uh, a lot of people obviously did the Johnny Sims one, which I get, I loved it. The other one that people wanted me to talk about was the reason I started lifting weights, hence the title. And I thought this was a good one to do this Monday, because I've never watched Miller's Musing before. It's all about mental health, life, depression, anxiety, the ups and downs, haha, of the things we go through day to day. And sometimes people say to me, Miller, how do you deal with all of that stuff? What's your go-to? What's your methods? And one of them is the gym. So I was like, okay, well, I can take that and I can tie it all in. So in short, I love going to the gym. And that sounds a bit silly. But what I mean by that is it's not just something I do because I think that it's healthy or that it's good for me. I genuinely look forward to going. Like, I'm no word of a lie. It's one of my favorite things to do. Certain exercises or certain uh, days, obviously I split my days up into like legs, shoulders, chest, blah, blah, blah. Uh, on certain days that I enjoy more than others, I'm genuinely, you know, it's on my list as I cannot wait for later when I can go to the gym, which I completely understand is weird <laughs> if you don't get it. And also on that note as well, we're going to jump around a bit here too. It's okay if you don't enjoy the gym. There's nothing wrong with dragging your ass there and going, I don't like this, but I'll do it because I understand it's good for me. Now, I would always implore when people ask me, you know, no preaching, but I would always implore people who want to get in good shape to try and find something that works for them because there's so many, op many options, especially in 2018, as opposed to just going to a gymnasium and lifting weights or doing cardio. And there's MMA, there's pro wrestling, as we know. Uh, you could be a gymnast. You could go horse riding. I'm just picking these out of my head. You go trampolining. Um, I mean, there's loads of stuff. I can't even, you know, I can't even think. Or you could do something like maybe you want to get into golf, right? And it doesn't really work with golf because you don't need to be in any kind of shape to play golf. You need to be talented, but you can be out of shape and be a good golfer. But maybe you like golf so much and you think, oh, well, now I will go and do this in the gym because it will help me with my golf game. That's my point. And because you've got that motivation, all of a sudden the gym becomes important. But for me personally, and there's obviously the chemical effect. When you go to the gym, you get a rush of endorphins. That's just, you know, your body saying, thanks for doing that. Go and do it again. And it makes you feel good. That's why people get addicted and why they go back. And I'm sure that's a big reason for why I love it as well. But it, it really is true. If I have a bad day or I'm feeling down or I'm struggling or something's happened that knocks me off my perch, I always know that for 90 minutes or so, I can go to the gym, I can go through a routine that I'm used to, and I can just shut off. All of a sudden, uh, you know, it, it's like I can, I can compartmentalize so much easier than I could when I'm not in the gym. And that's because I know what my goal is here. Stupidest goal ever pick up that weight so eventually you can pick up more weight, but for some reason it calms me down. And again, it just allows me to focus. It allows me to think just on this. And I'm listening to music or I've got a podcast on, so that's good. That's kind of shutting off the world too. And it's just a mental, it's just a mental escape. And I think that's why a lot of people kind of go from, I don't understand why people go to the gym to getting into it and then going, I completely understand why people are going to the gym. It's badass. And that's because it is badass um, for certain, again, depending on the parameters that we're talking about. So yeah, why I started doing it was, you know, I'm not, I should probably address, I will in fact, I'll address this in a more specific video, maybe this week, maybe we'll do a random vlog, um, but we'll kind of skip over it here and get back to it um, more focused down the line. I was bullied in school quite badly. Uh, I'm not going to name any names, even though, of course, if you've been bullied, you'll know. I remember all of them. <laughs> I remember all the specific names of uh, the people that did it. And I don't think it ties in. I didn't think to myself, oh, I'm now going to go to the gym and get big and strong to try and combat these bullies. But I do think once I'd found the gym, I realized, well, look, if I can get a bit bigger, it would make me feel, it was more, for me, it was more if I get more confident and I feel more secure in who I am. And then I can use that to hopefully hold my own a little bit better. But we'll do it. We'll do a vlog either this week or next week about my bullying. I don't mind talking about it. It's a huge part of who I am. And I wouldn't be who I was today if it hadn't have happened. So while I would never wish bullying on anybody, including myself, the fact that I did have to go through it, the silver lining and the cloud nine I take from it is it shaped me who I am today. It made me very headstrong. Um, it made me very, once I got over a few hurdles, happy with the things that I like, my passions. I didn't let anybody sort of, you know, dissuade me from any of that kind of stuff. I don't think that would have happened if I hadn't have faced that kind of adversity when I was a child. The offshoot of this is 
when I did, this is the way I found the gym, right? So I've got a good friend of mine, and my name's Luke. His, my name's Luke, his name is Luke. I've mentioned him on a few of these videos in the past because he's been my friend for like 30 years. So we have a lot of history with each other. And he's a couple of years older than me. And he was going to a gym down the road and it was an 18 only gym. Why there was an 18 only gym back then, I don't know, but there was. And he said, look, I can get you in. Do you want to come? Now, when you're, I was like 15, 16, when you have an older friend when you're a kid and they want to take you into quote unquote adult things, it's the coolest thing in the world because kids are stupid. So I was like, of course I want to go. So we went down, it was a tiny gym. Like it was honestly, it was like a corridor. It was so thin and wide. It had like eight machines in it. I'm going to walk around it in my head. It had, I don't remember it was on the right, but it had a shoulder shrug slash calf raise machine. It had a, a bicep curl. Then there was uh, something to some kind of back thing there. There was a pec deck, some ab stuff, and then some leg stuff on the other side. And it was the most basic bare bones gym ever. This is before the gym revolution. This was still during a time where if you, even if you wanted to get protein, you had to like do it on the black market because it was so rare. It wasn't that bad. But that's what it was like. And it was so weird. Like I did a bicep curl, and this sounds so cheesy, and you can roll your eyes and go, Millie, you're talking absolute shit. That's fine. But I did it, and it's something in my brain when... I don't know why to look at my bicep then. <laughs> my one dick. Um, but I did it, and I thought to myself, there's something in this. And that sounds stupid, right? How can that, that movement there make you go... What is it? But it did. I, I shit you not. It did. It was the same the first time I heard Metallica, which I'll also blog, blog about at some point, because loads of people ask me about that. But... Yeah, something in it woke something in my brain, and I, I I instantly knew this is something I want to learn more about. It's something I want to you know try and get into, and that's what I did. I went away. The internet back then, I'm an old man. The internet back then wasn't as full of information it was now. So I picked a few things. I bought bodybuilding mags, and I you know I learned a lot of stupid information. It took me years later to learn about diet and all that stuff. Stuff, but I started. We'll call it you know Instagram words. Uh, I started my journey on that day. And not once have I ever not wanted to go. I mean, there's been days when I'm sort of tired and exhausted and I'd rather not, obviously. But by and large, it kind of created a foundation, uh, much like the bullying stuff we mentioned. It kind of created a foundation for everything that I could then build off of it. If you've heard any kind of gym blog, you've heard this a thousand times, but it is true. It taught me how to set small goals and how to achieve them and also how to go about them. And once you realize that is kind of teaching you these life lessons, you then realize, shit, I, you go to work, right? And you go, if I do exactly what I did, you know, I wanted to add, to my biceps, I wanted to add a kilogram of weight to my biceps, whatever, as in terms of the curl. You think, okay, well, I did this, this. Surely I can take all of those. I can apply that to my work life. And maybe that will help me get to this point. And then it does work. And all of a sudden, you realize that you can use this gym knowledge to not only improve your physique to whichever, whatever end that may be. Everybody's different. But you could also sort of take it and retrain your brain and apply all these lessons to your outside life. Now, it's not going to work for everybody, I'm sure. But for me, uh, and we'll talk about this one day as well, I wasn't the best student in school because I didn't concentrate. I was, um, I was once described as a lovable dog by my geography teacher. Like, if you apply classic, right? If you apply yourself, you're going to fly but you don't apply yourself like a lovable dog. Everyone enjoys you being around, but you don't do anything. <laughs> it's still kind of very true. But the gym trained my brain. It focused my brain. And, and I started to understand how to put all these the pieces of the puzzle together. And I mean that to this day, which is why, if you haven't heard, I injured my shoulder being a wrestler a few months ago. Looks like, well, we are having surgery. I'm just waiting for days now. I get it, NHS, problems up the 2-9 um but still frustrating personally because you want to date you want to get this stuff done and yeah one of the things that i struggle with is the fact i can't go to the gym so some days when i do have a lot on um i'm going to the gym and doing legs and stuff but i can't train like i want to i've got to protect this so much but it yeah that's the that's the main thing for me because i've lost that routine i've lost that feeling and i've lost the again the foundation that has helped me for so many years i've been going to the gym for 18 years oh i'm old um, and yeah the fact that i've now lost that it was tough. It really, really was because, again, it was my foundation and that was pulled out for me. And I had to try and think of new things to do to, to make it work. And of course you do. Like, you know, it, with my experience I've got as an older man and all that kind of stuff, you figure out how to piece it together to be okay. And more often than not, you are. But that, that I mean, that's why I started going to the gym. And, and I'll tie it in as well to wrestling. If you, if, you, if you watch my wrestling stuff, Triple H was a huge influence for me on that stuff. I used to see him come out on Raw. And I'd just be like, flipping neck. He looks like a real-life Superman. He's like He-Man, right? And as a kid, I loved He-Man. I was like, I want to look like that. And you soon learn other stuff that may or may not have happened, and that changes blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to say anything. But, and it changes your goals, right? Okay, okay, I was going to go here. Maybe I'll stop here. But <laughs> apparently, allegedly, who knows? But 
yeah, I mean, that's why he's one of my favorite wrestlers ever, because in many ways, his inspiration to get me into a rate room helped me on everything that I've ever done since, because I don't believe I would be where I am now without the gym. And I understand how st stupid and cheesy and ridiculous that sounds. And again, you can roll your eyes at me all you want. And I'd be like, yeah, you, you should roll your eyes at me. But that's what it was. That that was my then my journey into the gym. And I, I you know, aside from a few injuries here and there, in overall, in terms of if you look at the bigger picture, I've always gone. I always will go. I can't ever see myself not going unless something completely out of nowhere happens. But let's fingers crossed that it doesn't. And I, yeah, just I can't imagine not going, not going to the gym. I'm I'm lucky that I love it. Uh, when you're passionate about something, it makes anything easier. It's not hard to go and do something you really enjoy because your brain rewards you for it anyway. So hopefully, I get back to it soon as well. And we get back to wrestling too. That's like, the wrestling would be another one of those that fits into that category. I'd having to find it a lot later on uh, than that. So yeah, that's my story. A lot of people ask. As always, I'm always happy to talk about it. If not, I just won't talk about it. Uh, if you want me to talk about the bullying stuff, I think I'll do that anyway. But if you are interested, leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what other stuff you'd like me to talk about. I've really got into this vlogging stuff now. Try and do a couple a week. One Miller's Musing, one Simon Miller Vlog, as I'll call it. And we'll take it uh, from there. Like the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't before. All of that would be great. And yeah, you know, go watch my other stuff as well. There's a Red Dead 2 Redemption playthrough we're doing at the moment. Um, there's some lists, some reviews, all kind of nonsense on this. Uh, it's still called The Miller Report. I changed the name to Simon Miller. Hopefully YouTube will change it eventually. Enough rabbing. I'll see you soon.